While the REPL is really useful for playing around and entering commands, a lot of the time we're actually going to be writing scripts. We want our programs to be in a file, in a format where we can run them over and over again, which really makes them more useful to us. And one of the things that you need to understand about scripts is how the commands are executed. By default, commands are executed one at a time from top to bottom using what we refer to as sequential execution. So, let's go with a fairly simple example here. And this example is I want to input in a uh, time. I'm going to input in a, a single string that, or I want to have a single string. So let's do time in seconds dot Scala. And time will start off here 13 hours, 42 minutes, and 16 seconds. Okay? And what I want to do is I want to calculate how many seconds that is. And it starts off as just a string, so we have to somehow deal with breaking that apart and then using the individual pieces. So we we learned how to operate on strings and how to find things in it. We're willing to assume that there are going to be these two colons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a new variable for first colon, and it will be the index of colon. So it'll give us the index of the first colon. And now you might argue, well, you know exactly where it is. It's at index 2, 0, 1, 2. I do for this string, but if I change the string, and it would be possible, for example, to have 130 hours, well, then it's no longer at index 2. I also want the second colon. Oops. And that I'm going to say is at the last index of a colon. And now I need to break these things apart. Uh, I'm going to use substring for it. Val hours equals time dot substring, I want to go from zero to the index of the first colon. Val minutes equals time dot substring, and I want to go from the first colon plus one, because I don't want that colon, to the second colon, and then val seconds equals time dot substring from second colon plus one to the end. So I can use the single argument version. Now, I've written a little bit of code here. I'd really like to know if this works. Okay, We could keep going on, but something that you should get into the habit of early is after you've written you know, whatever is a reasonable amount of code, as you become more experienced, you will do this less often because you will be more competent to write longer stretches of code without creating errors. But it's possible that I've mistyped something and that I've put an error in here. The longer you wait to find that error, the harder it generally is to deal with. So at this point I have six lines. That's enough that I at least want to see if this is going to run. So I'm gonna open another window over here and I'm going to try running this. Well, it didn't crash, but I didn't print anything out, so I don't know if it actually worked. So how about we do a print line, and we'll do an interpolated string of dollar hours, comma, dollar minutes, comma, dollar seconds. And now I'll run it, 13, 42, 16 looks like the code that we have so far is actually working. And now I need to do a little bit of math. Okay, well if I need to do math on these things, right now hours, minutes, and seconds are strings because substring gives me back a string. If I want to do math on them, I probably need these to be 
ints. So I'm going to add calls to two int to the end of those three lines. Turns out that if I run it, the output's going to look exactly the same because those strings print out the same as, or the ints print out the same as the strings did. Val, total seconds equals, well, we start off with hours times the number of seconds in an hour, which is 3,600, plus minutes times the number of seconds in a minute, which is 60 plus seconds, and then I'll print line total seconds. And we can run this, and I get a large number of seconds for this amount of time. Okay, this works. I mentioned the term sequential execution, and really what that means is that when this runs, it runs this first line, and then the second one, and then the third one, and they go in order from top to bottom. And that is the default way in which our script is going to execute. There's one more thing I want to introduce here. Uh, actually, there's two more things I want to introduce here. First is the fact that it might be nice to tell people what's going on in here, or to just say something about what it is that we're doing. This will convert a string with time to total seconds. Now what I've written here is called a comment, and there are two types of comments in Scala. This is a single line comment. You put slash slash, I can put it wherever I want, another comment. Okay. I'm going to delete that one because it's not a very useful comment. But I can put them at ends of lines and everything from the slash slash until the end of the line will be a comment. There's also multi-line comments which start with slash star. This is a long comment. It has multiple lines. And then they end with a star slash. Now, one of the reasons why these could be helpful is code written by Mark Lewis. It's actually good to get into the habit of saying things like the fact that you wrote this. If you're a student in one of my classes, it's really helpful to actually have your name at the top of, of the file, but your name isn't proper Scala, and therefore you typically want to put that inside of a comment because a comment is ignored and you can write whatever the heck you want inside of the comments. The other thing that I want to introduce is the fact that this right here really isn't very flexible. Okay, yes, I wrote a script, I can run it multiple times, I always get the same answer. What I'd really like to do is have it so that it asks the user to type in something like this, and then they can type it in and we can work with what they typed in. That would make this more flexible. So we'll start off by with a print line that asks the user for a time. Enter a time with colons between the values of hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay. And then somehow I need to read in this value. So there is a method that will do this. The full name of this method is rather long. It's called scala.io.stdin dot read line. Just to show that that works, we can come over here and I can type in a different string. So let's go with three hours, five minutes. I could make, well, we'll go with five minutes and 13 seconds. Okay. And there I get an answer. It is kind of interesting since I'm thinking of it. Yep. That works too. It doesn't mind the leading zeros. One thing to note is I really don't like having to type in this whole long name every time. I'd really like to just call this read line. Turns out there's also a read int and a read double that we will find useful. And if I don't want to have to type in the long name, I can use a special type of statement called an import. And I can import scala.io.stdin.underscore, which brings in all the things that are in here, which includes read line and read int, and then through the rest of the program, I can just do that. Because I like using this shorter name, I don't want to have to put in the whole thing. So we're going to get into the habit of, of putting that line at the top of our code. 
It turns out that because everything in Scala is imported to start with, we can also use this shortened version, and that's what I'll wind up actually typing in. So, one more time, 5 hours, 25 minutes, and 43 seconds, and we get an answer. So, this has shown you sequential execution in a script. We've learned about putting comments at the tops of our scripts and how we can do standard input using things like read line, read int, and read double.